Hi, I'm Antonia Zinger. I'm the writer producer of The Rage Fairy, um, which is going up at the Sherry Theater in NoHo um, with Ballview Entertainment. Uh, it's about a manic fairy who falls in love with a murderer and subsequently gets haunted by a cadre of murdered girls while she tries to pretend that all is well with her dream man. Uh, you'll laugh. You'll cry, you'll witness the destruction of reality as you know it. And it's just a fabulous time. If you wanna, if you wanna hear more about this, please listen to this interview. And here we go. So something interesting is that when I'm not a playwright or an actor or a producer, is that I'm actually a therapist. So I'm about to graduate from Pepperdine um, and will then be pursuing my MFT which uh, licensure, which is marriage and family therapy. Um, so, and it's very, it's very relevant to this play actually, because there's a lot about attachment, a lot about personality disorders, a lot about mental health. Um, so a lot of what I write and a lot of what I'm interested in is the human psyche and sort of what happens when, when mental health gets disrupted, when toxic relationships happen, uh, sort of faulty thinking patterns, things like that. So that I'd say is a big influence on me as a writer, um, which my, you know, my love of therapy and um, you'll, 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 you'll see how it, how relevant it is when you, when you watch the play. But uh, when I sent it to my publicist, she was like, oh, I can completely see why you're, that you're a therapist. That makes so much sense. So I had to write The Rage Fairy. Uh, yeah, I actually, like I said, I wrote The Rage Fairy in two weeks and I was just like in a state of anxiety at the time. Um, there was just a lot happening in my life and I was kind of making some very big decisions. Uh, so that was, that kind of like put me in this sort of heightened state. But the actual um, fairy, fairy tale, like the actual story about it, um, in a way I consider it a love letter to a friend of mine. Um, who, uh, who, is all, who, had, who had some of the issues that the Rage Fairy has. Um, but yeah, so, the, so, that, so that kind of fueled it. Um, and I think a lot of what the Rage fairy, about, fairy is about is very relatable, even though she is this manic fairy, um, which is just like attachment expectations. Uh, I think everybody knows the Rage Fairy a little bit, like <laughs> or they know someone who is like the Rage Fairy or they've been the Rage Fairy. So I think part of it was that was was just that, oh, like this is really real. Um, like what had happened, like the emotions that had went into it is like something where it was a very deeply felt relationship. And I think the the idea, so it it just it kind of the relationship cracked apart. And then I kind of put all like the love and like the the time I'd spent with this person into the play. And I was able to do it very quickly because I was in this, like I said, emotionally heightened state. Um, yeah. So the Rage Fairy is about uh, a manic fairy with a chaotic attachment style who falls in love with a murderer. And she subsequently gets haunted by a cadre of murdered girls and she just continues trying to pretend that all is well with her dream man, um, even as it becomes increasingly obvious that, uh, that he's quite dangerous and that he's creating a lot of chaos in her life. So that, that is, that it's what it, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's about, it's about attachment, it's about codependency, it's about the lies we tell ourselves um, and, what happened and like control a lot of the play is about control and wanting desperately to be able to control the reactions of other people to get love to get validation um and and that's a big theme i think another big theme is just femininity and masculinity uh and, and sort of you'll you'll notice a lot of toxic a lot of toxic relationships happen in this play and I think that the, despite the fact that this world is so out there, I think people will be able to recognize the patterns of those toxic relationships um, very well. And I wanted to direct the play, well, because I wrote it, so I feel like it's my story. Um, I, I just, so I, I know what I wanted it, I knew what I wanted it to look like. And I knew that it would be my responsibility to, to make that happen. 
Um, I actually would feel very strange if someone else directed anything I wrote uh, because they, they might do a brilliant job, but especially the first iteration of anything, it's, kind of, it's like, that's my vision and the vision isn't done on the page. And I, ha I have, and I had, and I have a very specific vision for the Rage Fairy. And in order to communicate that vision, I wanted to take it all the way to the end. Um, Cause words on a page, are, are just kind of the blueprint. And I wanted to see, I wanted to take it to the point where it was fully realized. Uh, Cause it's, it feels incomplete otherwise, you know, like a script is incomplete without everything else added. So I, I believe that directing it is my way of completing my story. It, otherwise it kind of feels like a writer, just like having someone else write the epilogue. Um, or like <laughs> finish, finish their book. I mean, I want them to laugh. I want them to cry. I, I want them to feel very uncomfortable. I, yeah, what, to, what I want the audience to get out of it is just to sort of have a really good time, but then also sort of recognize these, as I said, toxic relationships, these sort of impulses within us that are very self-defeating, um, that create a lot of pain. Um, and just to be uncomfortable with how often this sort of dynamic does happen. Um, and to, but mainly to have a really good time. This play is really funny. Um, the actors are phenomenal. There's a lot of laughs. Uh, so, so that is, that's very, that's the main thing that's really important as well. It's a dark comedy. Definitely. That, that is, it's an absurdist dark comedy. That would be the, the genre. Um, so yeah, the play is an absurdist dark comedy. It's really funny. It's often uncomfortable in a good way. The viewers should attend because the production's fantastic. Like it's so good. Um, like I, I have such a good time. I get, I kind of hide and listen to the show, um, while, while it's happening. And it is like, we had opening night, everyone was laughing all the time, but also, yeah, it's just really real performances that are grounded as well as hilarious. And I also think there's just nothing, nothing like this show. Um, it is, it's really different and it's out there in a fun way. And I think it will really surprise audiences. Um, I, someone, you know, someone asked me if I, if like I was on LSD when I wrote it and I was not, um, but it's kind of that sort of fever dream. My brother described it as, uh, like driving, driving in a convertible at top speed for two hours. Well, not two hours, but like just really fast. And then that feeling of like, when it's done, like getting out of it and he's like, oh my God, well, like what even happened? Like, I feel concussed, but like in a good way, um, so I think, I think it's just a completely new experience and I think it will knock people off their feet, give them a good time, definitely see it. Mainly just like, again, I wanna stress like how fantastic the performances are. Um, like everyone is killing it. Um, like I said, it's a huge marathon for Holly, like Isaac and very dangerous as the murderer, but also hilarious. Um, I think there's a lot of just fun moments where it's like, yeah, if please come, it's like, unlike anything you've probably ever seen. Um, and yeah, that that's, that's what I'd say. Um, hi, I'm Antonia Zinger. I'm the writer producer of the Rage Fairy um, with Ballview Entertainment. Come out to NoHo to see what happens when a manic fairy falls in love with a murderer. Um, we'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll witness the entire destruction of reality as you know it. Um, and you'll maybe be a little creeped out by how relatable it is. Um, looking forward to seeing you there.